We've seen what a two billion dollar presidential election race looks like. How about what the candidate looks like when it's all over? Time now for Media Watch here on France Van Cap, which I'm joined by Florence Filimino and her trusty laptop. Are uh, you starting off yet again looking back to the uh, US uh, <laughs> election and a tear for Barack Obama thanking his uh, campaign staff? That's right. This was Wednesday before heading back to Washington. He stopped at his campaign headquarters in Chicago, where he tearfully thanked his uh, staff there. And uh, let's take a listen to what he said on Wednesday. What you guys have done means that uh, the work that I'm doing is important. And I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of all of you. And, uh, and, and, and what you just done... I'm welling up myself. <laughs> Well, Mitt Romney's staff, on the other hand, got a little bit of a different thank you. Um, it turns out that in the middle of Tuesday night, the uh, credit cards that their staff were using were canceled. Uh, so Mitt Romney didn't waste any time after giving his uh, concession speech. And according to this article in uh, Forbes magazine, uh, it says that aides taking cabs home late that night got a rude awakening when they found that their credit cards linked to the campaign no longer worked. Oh, it's hardly fair, is it? OK, uh, Twitter next and uh, more racist tweets. It's a recurring theme. That's right. Hundreds of racist uh, tweets uh, over on election night. Now, uh, it's shocking and depressing to think that though America has come so far uh, by uh, re-electing an African-American, there's still so much uh, racism. Now, I've decided I'm not going to show you any of these tweets because they're really very racist and quite violent. But if you're interested, uh, Jezebel has lots of screen grabs of them in a gallery. So if you're curious, you can go look. Uh, what's interesting to note, though, is that uh, a group of geography academics uh, have decided to uh, ch turn this hate into information. <laughs> uh, they're under the name of Floating Sheep, and look what they managed to do. They managed to make this, this map. This racism map. Is a that racism right? yeah. map, that's right, because a lot of these uh, tweets have uh, geocodes. Uh, so basically, uh, they managed to make this map, and they also managed to rank the states according to the highest number of uh, racist uh, tweets. So I guess somewhat unsurprisingly, the top three are Alabama, Mississippi, and uh, Georgia. Uh, also interesting to note that uh, in Mississippi, on the night of the election uh, at the University of Mississippi, there, what, there was what people have called a mini riot um, when the election results came in. Several students from the university got really angry, went outside, and here's some photos that were taken, as you can see. Um, here they are, for instance, burning an Obama-Biden sign. Uh, now, that wow. upset a lot of people in uh, that community. And, and here you see photos of a vigil, a candlelit vig vigil that was held uh, the next night. Uh, but coming back to those racist tweets, uh, Jezebel, once again, um, has tracked some of the tweeters down. And it turns out that a lot of them were actually teenagers tweeting under their real name. Now, they probably won't get into any legal trouble because uh, the First Amendment will uh, protect their freedom of, of speech. But uh, Jezebel went and contacted uh, their schools and uh, asked them, is this in line with what a lot, a lot of schools have ethical co codes of conduct? And so Jezebel said, is this, is this consistent with your code of conduct? Now, a lot of uh, the Twitter accounts have been taken down, and many of these students are going to be t facing disciplinary action.